Hello, welcome again to the weekly business roundup. I'm here to give you the highlights of the week in terms of business. My name is Abigail. Here are the trends of this week. Zimbabwe is emerging as a promising destination for investment with various sectors offering great potential for growth. The government has been actively working to create a favorable business environment by introducing policies aimed at attracting foreign direct investment. Sectors such as agriculture, mining, manufacturing and tourism are seen as key areas where investors can benefit from Zimbabwe's rich natural resources and strategic location in southern Africa. One of the major draws for investors is Zimbabwe's abundant mineral resources, particularly in gold, platinum and lithium. The country has been opening up its mining sector, making it easier for foreign investors to participate in exploration and extraction. Additionally, the government has been working to improve infrastructure, which is essential for supporting large-scale mining operations and export activities. Apart from mining, Zimbabwe's agricultural sector holds great potential, especially in horticulture and livestock farming. The country's favorable climate and fertile land make it ideal for agricultural investment. While tourism continues to grow, with its stunning landscapes and wildlife attracting visitors worldwide. What business sector would you invest in? Also, Zimbabwe's gold production is expected to hit another record high driven by strong global demand and increased mining activities. Gold is one of the country's most valuable exports and the government has been working with both large and small-scale miners to boost production. With efforts to improve infrastructure and offer better support to miners, Zimbabwe aims to further increase its gold output. The government is focused on ensuring that the mining sector remains competitive and sustainable, which will help the country take advantage of the high gold prices prices and strengthen its economic position in the global market. Adding on, Tobacco Sales Limited TSL reported a 13% increase in revenue for the third quarter of 2024 compared to the same time last year, largely thanks to its logistics business. In their update, TSL noted that they had positive cash flow which they planned to reinvest for growth. Most of their revenue, 83%, was earned in US dollars. The company handled 52.5 kgs of tobacco, slightly up from 52 million kgs last year, with contracted tobacco making up 84% of its volume. However, some product lines saw lower demand due to a smaller national crop size. The logistics business had mixed results, while tobacco handling volumes dropped by 37%, General cargo volumes also fell as customers reduced their use of services. However, the distribution of goods and transport distances increased by 47% and 8% respectively. Which other cash crops in Zimbabwe do you think can bring in much revenue and profits? Now looking at the regional trends, e-invoicing is emerging as a key strategy to combat VAT refund fraud in South Africa. The introduction of this digital system aims to enhance transparency and efficiency in the invoicing process, making it harder for fraudulent activities to occur. Currently, VAT refund fraud poses a significant challenge for the South African Revenue Services, SARS, leading to substantial financial losses. By implementing e-invoicing, businesses can ensure that all transactions are recorded electronically, thereby reducing the chances of errors or manipulation. This process not only helps in mitigating fraud but also simplifies the claims process for legitimate VAT refunds. Experts believe that adopting e-invoicing can strengthen compliance and improve revenue collection for SARS. As more businesses transition to this digital approach, it is expected to foster a more secure and reliable VAT system in South Africa. Now looking into Zambia, the Bank of Zambia BOZ has announced new directives aimed at eliminating unwarranted fees associated with electronic money services, stating that these charges hinder financial inclusion efforts in the country. Signed by the BOZ, 
Deputy Governor on September 14, 2024, the directives focus on identifying and prohibiting unjustified fees. They also aim to regulate specific charges related to electronic transactions. Under the new regulations, electronic money institutions that fail to comply could face penalties including fines up to 200,000 kwacha or imprisonment for up to two years. The Bank of Zambia highlighted that imposing unnecessary fees on consumers is a violation of their rights and poses a threat to financial inclusion. The directives list several prohibited charges such as fees for depositing money into wallets, surcharges on merchant payments, and charges for failed transactions. Other banned fees include those for balance inquiries and wallet service like opening or closing accounts. This initiative reflects the BOZ's commitment to protecting consumers and ensuring fair access to financial services. Our business tip of the week. Before registering a company, determine the best structure for your business. Whether it's a private limited company, partnership or sole proprietorship. Each structure has different benefits and legal obligations. Now looking at the headlines again, Zimbabwe is becoming a prime destination for investment with sectors like mining, agriculture, and tourism offering significant potential for growth. The country's gold production is expected to hit new records due to increased demand and government support, while companies like TSL report strong revenue from tobacco sales and logistics despite challenges. On a regional level, South Africa is adopting e-invoicing to combat VAT fraud, and in Zambia, the Bank of Zambia is introducing measures to remove unjustified fees for electronic money services, promoting financial inclusion across the region. That is all I had for you today. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. You can join me again, same time, same place.